Hey everybody, welcome back to another Tip Tuesday by Performance Designs. My name is Bo Reby. I'm back in the office to talk to you about riser length and how changing your riser length can affect the way your parachute flies as well as the way your parachute lands. Now I'm not here to talk to you specifically about whether you want to lengthen or shorten your risers, but there's something you should know if you do decide to ever do that. Um, so this first, uh, I've got three stick figures up here. It's all the same person, but they all have different riser lengths, all right? So this first uh, jumper, their riser length is 21 inches. That's kind of an industry standard for riser length. Um, and then this blue dotted line down here below, I'm just gonna call it the bottom end of their flare. So that's kind of where they, where this jumper, they prefer that, that bottom end finishing power on their flare is right here. Uh, now, if this jumper lengthens their risers by three inches and puts on 24 inch risers, they're gonna be sitting lower under the parachute, essentially, and thus that same point in comparison to the 21 inch risers is going to be higher on their body. So if it was here before, it's gonna be three inches higher. So there's something to keep in mind is that uh, as you lengthen your risers, your inputs uh, or your response from the parachute given a certain input are gonna happen a little bit quicker. Also, that means that your stall point is gonna be three inches higher as well. So there's a safety tip bit there too. Uh, moving to the next scenario, same jumper has now shortened the risers by three inches to have 18 inch risers. So now, if we follow this blue line across, that, that, um, that bottom end of the flare, the finishing of the flare, which was originally at this person's waist, is now gonna be down three more inches. So um, there's something to think about. If you shorten your risers and you notice that you're not getting as strong a flare as you once were, that's because you're sitting higher up under the canopy and thus you're maybe not flaring the extra three inches that you need to. Um, so one solution to that, that people choose to do is to shorten their brake lines, right? If you're higher up on the parachute and you wanna raise your, uh, the bottom end of that flare in comparison to the first image by three inches, you can shorten your brake line by three inches. However, something to keep in mind is if you decide to shorten your brake lines, uh, you can in fact shorten them too far to where you're deflecting the tail of the parachute even when you're in full flight. So if you're in full flight and there is some tail deflection, that means that the parachute is not actually flying in full flight and that would have an adverse effect on your flare uh, regardless of where you're flaring to or, or anything like that because you're flying, essentially you're flaring from core to brakes, something like that. So here's kind of a quick explanation of that. Uh, if you choose to uh, shorten or lengthen your risers, how it affects your flare, flare point, your stall point, it also can have effects on the way a parachute flies, the way a parachute recovers, the way you swing under the canopy, but that's stuff that we'll get into on a later Tip Tuesday. This one is just about lengthening or shortening your brake lines in comparison to uh, your original test case scenario. Um, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you keep having some, some nice jumps and some, some good landings. If you have any questions regarding any of this, please let us know. Uh, otherwise, tour starts soon, so we'll see you out there, and have a good day. Thanks.